Week 14, best bets in the NFL. We got two spreads, one over under and two player props coming your guys' way. Yo, what's going on, everyone? This is Austin from Calling Our Shot. We're going to get into it today for week 14. Now, we'll put up the record on the screen. Player props-wise, absolutely killing it. We've been doing pretty well all season long. Now, spreads and over-unders, I won't lie to you. We've been ice cold the past couple weeks. Hopefully, we can end the season strong in that category. Now, we will have our full parlays and player props video live on Saturday night. That video alone last week, it not only cashed the money line parlay, which was plus 1,500 odds, three underdogs, Seattle Seahawks, Los Angeles Chargers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers cash it, but also player props alone in that video, 16 and four over the past five weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that one. Today's Thursday. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. If you enjoyed the video, we would appreciate you joining the community, calling our shots, going to the moon, and we want you to be aboard with us. Now, we're almost at 15,000 subscribers. We appreciate all of you out there. Like the video and share it with a friend if you really want to. Now, let's start with some player props, what we've been killing it on. We'll start with the first one. Patrick Mahomes, under 18 and a half rushing yards, minus 120 on DraftKings or Caesar Sportsbooks. Now, if you don't have these two sportsbooks and you're in a legal state with them, well, then you should click the first link in the description, dimers.com slash COS, a bunch of exclusive sign-up bonuses for those sportsbooks, and you don't want to miss out on them. There's like a thousand risk thousand dollar risk-free bets, a bunch of different cool things. You definitely want to use that link. Now, I'm not a guy that bet a lot of Mahomes unders, but I think we have value on this one. Now, for starters, Mahomes has taken on the Raiders this week in a team he obviously sees twice, sees twice a week. Now, Mahomes has gone under this line four straight games, and he went on a stretch earlier this season when he was cashing the over pretty frequently. And now since they're getting healthier with Clyde edwards helaire coming back, all the guys really healthy and active, he just hasn't been running all that much. And he's yet to hit this over since November. So in October, September, he was doing pretty well. November came around, just not hitting the over. Now, you look at it, last these teams, teams played a couple weeks ago in November, and Mahomes, zero rushing yards on zero attempts. He didn't even have to run. And you see that? Maybe that goes to show you how bad this Raiders secondary is. It is not that great. And Mahomes really only runs when no one's open. And so if people get open, boom, he doesn't have to run the ball, and I think that will be the case today. Now, the Chiefs, like I said, getting healthy on offense. CEH is back over the past few weeks, and they're finally getting it going. Tyree killed Travis Kelsey in the gang. Now, this season, the Ravens, or not the Ravens, the Raiders have conceded three guys to hit this over, over 18 and a half rushing yards. Their names are Jalen Hurts, Lamar Jackson, and Jacoby Brissett. One of those guys... It's not like the others, but it would make sense that Lamar Jackson and Jalen Hurts would hit this over against them. Now, look, Jacoby Brissett, a little odd guy to hit the over. I think he had 37 rushing yards. Very weird game. Now, he did drop back 60 times in that game. It was an overtime game, and he's a guy much more keen to run. Plus, you look at the Dolphins playmakers, not as you know talented as the Chiefs, that is. So, they're probably not as open. Brissett looks at his first read. Uh, it's it's they're, they're, they're covered. Boom, he's running off and taking off. But I like Mahomes to go under. He's gone under in two straight versus the Raiders and in four of his last six. And the Chiefs, nine-point favorites in this game. You'd assume they should be up. He shouldn't be throwing it a whole lot. But like I said, last time these two, I believe last year, last year the Raiders were nine, ten-point underdogs in Arrowhead, and they beat them outright. So we'll see how that game goes. Now another player prop, C.D. Lamb, over 70 and a half receiving yards, minus 110. Now we took this last Thursday in our same game parlay. Cash it. We actually took his over, I believe, 80-plus receiving yards, and he cashed that one easily. Now, we talked about this prop in the past, and the reason I love it so much today is the Cowboys want C.D. Lamb in the slot. That is where he is dominant, where they think he's the most valuable in the slot in the slot position. Now, finally, they got Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup back. At least they have them at the time, and those two guys they like putting on the outside, Lamb in the slot. Now, those two guys are great on the outside, and they love to see him land run those crossing routes, slants, get the ball in his in his hands, and just have him make make plays because that's what he's good at. That's what he's great at. Electric with the ball in his hands. Now. Uh, sadly, they really haven't had those three guys active all too much. Now, they've only been active three games this season, and in all three, C.D. Lamb has hit the over. He's at 104 yards, 94 yards, and then 89 last week, which the 89 is a little questionable because 33 yards of – if you add 33 because one of the, his catches was ruled a, a technical 33-yard run. But he's been dominant in the slot all season, and he gets the lineup against Washington football team, a team that has been burnt by the slot in the past this season. They just gave up 100 yards to Hunter Renfro, 100 yards earlier this season to Cole Beasley, 100 yards to Tyler Lockett, 100 yards to Sterling Shepard. A lot of guys have exposed them in the slot. A guy that will run a lot of a lot of plays out of the slot. You look at Amari Cooper, Michael Gallup, both those guys running deeper routes. CD Lamb should be open wide, open over the middle. And you look at the Cowboys offense, has a ton of firepower, and I don't think the Washington football team defense is ready for that. So I'll be riding with CD Lamb over 70 and a half receiving yards. They love to feed him. Hopefully they continue to feed him tonight. Now that kind of or on Sunday. Now that kind of moves to my spread pick. Taking the Cowboys, minus four, taking on the Washington football team, minus 110 on FanDuel. Now, Cow Cowboys obviously traveling to take on the hot, red-hot Washington team that has won four games in a row. So props to them. Give them a round of applause. They've really been doing well in the, in 
winning games because they really started off pretty poor. They were two and six and now one six, four straight, now six and six. Now, on one hand, you got a Cowboys team that's just kind of struggled. I mean, they had a large lead on the division. Now they've kind of struggled, lost a couple games. Well, they only got a two game lead. If they lose this one, they'll be down to one game. But and then you got the Washington football team that's hot. But I'm going to ride with the Cowboys for a couple reasons. Number one, they're finally getting healthy. Demarcus Lawrence, their star defensive player, uh, defensive line player, finally back. And he's one of their most impactful players on that side of the ball. And it gives them that one two punch that they really need with the de future defensive rookie of the year, Micah Parsons, who's been unreal this season. But they need Demarcus Lawrence, another guy that can make plays on that defensive line. Number two, their offense finally, like I said, has the three receivers back. Michael Gallup missed several games. Then you had he finally came back. Amar Cooper said, I'm out of here. And then finally, and the CeeDee Lamb also threw his injury in there. But all three should be back at least as of 9.35 a.m. Thursday morning. All three guys are back today. And I think they will be able to prove that, that Washington can't stop them. Now, Ezekiel Elliott, still a question mark. Tony Pollard played really well, so I'm not concerned about that. Third point, Washington football team. I think they've overachieved these past couple weeks. They should have probably lost to that Raiders team last week. Prior to that, they tried to give the game away to the Seahawks, to which they were like, hey, see, take the win, Seahawks. And they were like, no, we're good. And then they kept trying to give it back, but the Seahawks said, no, you're, we don't want it. And then, the only, and then the previous win was against Cam Newton and the Panthers, which is a great story. Just not a good football product. And then their most impressive win came against the Buccaneers. You know, they dominated that fourth quarter with that ice ice away touchdown by Antonio Gibson. But the Bucs team missing Antonio Brown, missing Rob Gronkowski, missing a lot of their defensive players too. So my, I, not, I don't necessarily, and the Bucs were on the road where they are notoriously not as great. Fourth note, Dak Prescott, seven and one career record versus Washington. And he's covered in six of those games. The so one game and pushed in one of them. The one he pushed was his first ever game against Washington in his career back in 2016. I'll ride with the Cowboys in a big way. And moving on to my last spread pick of the video, Bengals, plus one and a half, minus 110 on, on FanDuel versus the 49ers. Now, take the money line if this line changes a little bit. I don't envision it changing too much. It's gone from plus one and a half, minus one and a half. Might just switch back and forth, kind of like that. But here we got an inconsistent football team. The Bengals proved that last week. That's exactly who we thought they were, an inconsistent team. That's why I picked the Chargers in my money line parlay. Versus... Another inconsistent team, the 49ers, who go on a hot streak, then go on a cold streak, and but vice versa. Now the Bengals, they never got their ground game going against the Chargers last weekend, despite being a great matchup. But I think that was more so Brandon Staley, the head coach of the Chargers, has worked with Zach Taylor, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals. He knew what he would run with. They both coached with the Rams, and they kind of knew exactly what uh, each other would do. So it kind of played into the hands of Brandon Staley a little bit more. Now both of these te two teams... Now you're talking about the you're talking about these two teams, the Bengals and the 49ers, both very up and down. Now this is a game. I think the Bengals bounce back and they win this one outright. 49ers, all sorts of banged up. Everyone's injured on that side. They got Debo Samuel banged up. Don't know if he'll play. That's a big loss if he does not play. And all their running backs currently injured, except for Jermichael Hasty. They got Elijah Mitchell injured. They got Jeff Wilson Jr. injured. They got Trey Sermon injured. They're working out running backs at the moment, trying to get some guys in for Sunday's game. I just don't love that. I'm gonna play with the Bengals, play back. They're gonna play inspired. They're at home. I'm gonna ride with them. This this is, this is a pivotal game for both teams' playoff pushers, and I think the Bengals come out and win this one. They just feel like the hungrier team in this one and a little bit healthier than, than the 49ers, that is. But So if the line changes, take the money line. Now my last play of the day, Seahawks and the, the Titans, the, the Texans and the Seahawks are taking the under 42 points, minus 110 on BetMGM. Now the Seahawks, they just used up all their points that they had the rest of the season on, on that 49ers game, scoring 30-something points. Gerald Everett tried to sell the bag, tried to try to lose them that game outright. But both these two teams, these Texans and the Seahawks, off, Seahawks offenses, yeah, they aren't just that good. The Texans run the ball a lot for a team that can't run the ball. It's very, very odd. Now, you got the you got the Seahawks in their last two road games. They've scored 0 and 15 points. They just have not looked good. And the Texans' defense, while well, you know, maybe doesn't have the biggest names, they've been pesky, and they play tough. And that's what I'm hoping for today. They're at home, the Texans, that is. Now, the over-under line for the Seahawks, 2-9-1. Cash the, nine, the under 9 of 12 games, and you're really 9 of 11 since one of them pushed. And then the Texans, on the other hand, 4-8 on the on the over-under line, cashing the under in two-thirds of their games this season. The, the Seahawks have yet to cash an over on the road, and they are on the road again today. Now the Texans are coming off a game. They just scored zero points against the Colts, so if they want to duplicate those efforts, we, we, well, kudos, you guys. We, we approve that if you want to go up and put zero. The Seahawks are not scoring 42 points today. If they do, you can clip this. But... Tyrod Taylor could be back, or they look like they might be starting Davis Mills this week, and I don't know why they'd go to Davis Mills, because they saw that experiment went earlier this season, but 
hey, sign me up. I'll take the under even more. Now, as Davis Mills didn't really show a lot of promise last year. Now, I see this game going under for a multitude of ways. This could be a very ugly game. Probably won't be on red zone a whole lot. And that'll wrap it up. I'm just going to take Texans, Seahawks under 42 points. I like both teams' trends in terms of the under, and I'll ride with them. Now, Saturday night, parlays and player props. You guys will see that video around 8.30 Eastern time, so make sure you're there. Make sure you put your notifications bell on for the channel so you don't get a notification when it goes live. Appreciate you guys for tuning in. And we're going to get after it this weekend. Hope you guys have a great NFL Week 14, Minnesota Vikings, and the Steelers. Best bets is on the, on the screen if you have already watched it. Hopefully that game goes well. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. This has been awesome. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.